So, I'm Greg, welcome back, Emerald City Comic Con, and I'm here with Jill Thompson of Scary Godmother, Beast of Burden, uh, various endless, endless pieces, <laughs> uh, and, and just absolute uh, adoration from her fans. So, thanks for joining us today. The fans are not here right now because we're doing this. Um, hi, I'm doing really well. Wonderful. Um, so, you are, uh, you know, most recently coming off of Beast of Burden, uh, which coming out of the collections to its own miniseries has done amazingly well. I'm glad it's done amazingly well. We're really, really proud of that series. Evan Dorkin, the writer, and I um, never realized that when we started out just doing an eight page story for an anthology series, that we would end up doing four stories for an anthology series and then have it spin off into its own series. Um, right now I'm working on another Beast of Burden story, uh, well, starting to work on. Um, so in addition to the, the miniseries, there's going to be some, a little something extra. I can't, I think Dark Horse has to announce it, so I can't announce it, but I, people want to know, is there going to be more? And I can definitely tell you that there is going to be more. That's wonderful to hear. It's really exciting, and it well, and it it's such an emotional series, you know, not not in a negative way, but I mean, you really are drawn in both through the through through the art and the writing to to care about and really connect with these characters. Well, I hope that most stories that people write are written in such a way that you come to care about the characters, so you continue to read about them. But I think because it's animals, hopefully everyone that's picking up the book likes, you know, I mean, I think people have an affection for animals and naturally want to kind of take care of them, so you may be a little bit more invested right on the get-go, you know? Sure, sure. <laughs> it crushes me. I mean, you know, stuff Evan has written, I've, I've wept openly while drawing it, just sobbed while, while working on it. And I think that's good. And then when I draw something, I end up, I try to make some, everything have as much emotional impact as possible, build up to a certain scene, really make the characters emote, even though they're animals. Um, because I, if I figure if I can make myself cry, then hopefully I'll be able to make you guys cry. <laughs> Well, I, I can attest for, uh, you know, there are five of us that do this podcast, and I can attest for more than half of us responded as crying while reading segments of that. So, well, maybe, you know, like not like I don't want you laying on the floor sobbing, but, you know, I do want your eyes puddling up. I want water leaking out of your face at some point. Well, like that lump in your throat, maybe if you're trying to hide your tears. Yeah, yeah choked up. Oh, absolutely. Well, and, and it's, it's wonderful to hear, uh, it's not wonderful to hear that you were crying while doing it, but it's wonderful to hear that that was the, that was the emotion because it was, it was conveyed, it was, it was immediately expressed. Well, I mean, um, the story that, that really gets me is, um, and if I think about it now, I'll puddle up, uh, is the story that was in the fourth anthology that has not been seen online and a lot of the readers who just picked up the new miniseries haven't seen. Uh, it was called a, a, a Dog and His Boy, and Ace is my favorite. So there was a certain part in there that just, if, if a reader looks hard enough, there's, I cried and a tear fell down from my eye on the page while I was painting and the salt in my tear made a perfect little watermark flower on the illustration. So, um, because I was so moved while I was doing it, but. That's 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 a that's just an amazing. That's really neat. So you'll, that's the story that gets me every time. And if I think, even when I was just laying it out, I was you know I was like, okay, the, I, how I how I tried to pace it because I. And then the weird thing was is the the scene that I'm talking about. Evan wrote it as like two panels, and I after I read it, I immediately thought, oh my God, this is this is the most important part of the story, and we had to jam it, you know, Evan had to jam it into a little bit because, you know, there, there was an anthology and there was no more room, and I called Scott Alley right away, and I said, please, 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 somehow I, can I have two pages more? I said, I need to open this up. I need, I, I'll send you my layout. I, this is what needs to happen here because this is too important to this character to let it go. And um, they were able to sacrifice something 
um, to give me two more pages to make it happen that way, and I'm I'm really glad. Yeah. That that again, and that's so wonderful to be able to have that kind of relationship with the people that you work with to say this needs to happen for the story, and it gets to happen. And that the book, you know, had room for it because I don't think it would have been. A, I mean, it would have been a really sad story, and the, the plot would be the same, but I don't think it would have been as heart wrenching. Well, the, and that's really great. You know, we've talked about um, we've a lot of the different interviews we've had. We've talked to people about the challenges and the confinements of the work that they do, and having to work in someone else's, you know, sandbox and things like that. And so that's that is just one of those stories that, not to, you know. Um, make one better than the other, but it really highlights how wonderful it is to have that kind of working relationship. There was no question there. No, there wasn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is great to have that kind of relationship and um, and to be able to talk to Evan and say, okay, I'm not saying that, you know, that you wrote this wrong. It's like I can understand that, you know, you realized you had 14 or 16 pages and you had to cram everything in because by the time, I mean, each story got longer and longer and longer as we went on and, and that story was nearly the size of a whole regular issue of comics and that's when we realized, you know, he had so much more in his head than, you know, just these like teeny tiny little stories. We were actually continuing, we were telling complete stories that went with the theme of each one of those books. However, they were continuing the lives of these animals, so, um, He's got so much material in his head for, for this and the things he knows about the city and stuff that, you know, may never see the light of day just is really, really wonderful. It's such a rich, rich universe.